I think it's important that the trappers know we value them. We value the work they do. We know how important they are to the information that they bring us here at the department. And we know that they're good, honest, hardworking Vermonters. It can feel for folks who have like grown up here forever that it's people coming from away who may not understand or even ever experienced cultural practices like hunting and trapping, saying, I don't like the way that you're doing stuff without taking the time to really get to know and understand what the kind of reality of, of, of folks' practices are. Videos where we're talking about how to sustainably manage a species will get taken offline because we showed a, a deceased beaver. But before it got taken offline, the comments were saying that, you know, they'd like to see our head chopped off and, you know, bled throughout town. And no, no one's got a problem with those. It's an injustice. And it's an injustice for, for the non-native people who have been doing it just as long as we have. It is discriminatory. The, the, the way that the anti-community has attacked trapping is discriminatory. It is a we they mentality. It's endemic in society at this point, really, isn't it? You're either in lockstep with me or you're the enemy. We can't have conversations anymore. I hope that we can find ways to talk about these sometimes difficult issues in a way that we bring curiosity and humility and kind of respect for each other and not get kind of stuck in extremes, taking the time to, to listen and understand before making kind of snap judgments that can feel sort of disparaging of people's way of life. Once you other a set of people in your community, then it's okay to attack them, right? They're now no longer human, and we don't need to worry about their humanity. We all have different perspectives. We live in a time of inclusivity. Our society wants everyone to be loved and involved and part of this process. The trappers are part of that too. And because someone doesn't specifically agree with how we value wildlife, doesn't mean that we should not be able to, to have that, to interact with it in that way. One of the coolest things about Vermont is hunting and fishing is in its constitution. The right to hunt and fish. The right, the right to hunt and fish. It's one of the only states with it written in the state constitution. And that's, I think that's amazing. These activities, for most, are not a simple time-to-time -time event. They're a lifestyle. We get pigeonholed as being less than 1% of the population, so we don't matter. And if you can point out to me what other population we would accept that language about, I would be interested to hear it. What I love about living in rural Vermont, again, is like, it's a variety of folks doing a variety of different things. And like, we may not agree on everything, but like, usually we show up and care for each other. And I don't want us to lose that. You know, we might do things differently, but like, that, that's okay. That's, that's what's special about this place. We don't all have to dress the same and do the same things in our free time. And, look down on other people who do things differently. The reason I do any of this is for my kids and my grandkids. I want them to have the same opportunities and experiences that I've had. They want to stop trapping. It's part of an ideology that runs contrary to who I am as an indigenous person. This is part of my culture. It's part of the culture of a host of non-native Vermonters. People don't respect that. They can respect the fact that a Native American does certain things because it's their heritage and it's their upbringing. It's the same for me. It's my heritage and my upbringing.